Hi there, so uh, back with another video, and this one I wanted to sort of step away from Grimdark because um, it's all dark and horrible and nasty, and decided to go towards sort of explaining why I'm painting up this Iand and Forza of Eldar, as you see here down below. So recently my friend has started diving in and getting involved in Warhammer 40,000 again and building an Orc army, and another friend of mine has got a Necron army as well, so um, 40k seems to be the game of the moment um, within our little cabal of, or trio, as I guess you'd say, a crusade perhaps. Um, and so I decided to try and jump on the bandwagon and I wanted to try and put together an army that I was going to very much play with rather than just sort of paint and have it sit on the sign. Um, so I decided to go for Eldar uh, and, and in that vein, same vein anyway. Um, go for Eldar with a um, sort of elite take on it. Um, and so that's why you see so many Wraithguard here. <laughs> um, my idea was that I wanted to dive in and play the game, but I didn't want to spend a lot of time dedicating myself to Warhammer 40,000 when there are so many other projects that I need to do, um, and then so many other ranges and stuff out there as well. And so... I decided to go for Eldar because they were my first army. I decided to go with Iandan because they were the first army that ever really sort of like spoke to me in terms of their kind of lore and their background. I love the idea of like a wraith army, an army of ghosts and Eldar and sort of space elves um, sort of taking to the skies. Um, and then I also decided on contrast as well because, as I say, I want to get this army together very quickly. Now, my original army of Eldar from way back when I was sort of like 11 or 12 uh, looked like this. So this was a guy painted in Airfix paint. You can see the I hand in yellow underneath there somewhere. <laughs> uh, I thought Silver Hell was cool because Space Elves, right? Um, but yeah, so <laughs> thankfully I'm not going to be doing that again. And also I was struck by how fiddly and annoying it is going to be to paint things like these Guardians and stuff. So what I decided on doing was an entirely elite Wraith Guard force, as you can see here, um, and the contrasts. So contrast yellow, which is this one, Boop. and the ultramarine blue were the main flavour of this particular army, and of course Wraithbone for trying to uh, <laughs> cover up all those mistakes. Um, and then from there, it's basically just been a fairly easy process trying to get these miniatures painted up. Um, one of the things that's quite nice about this, obviously, is that the contrast paint goes down very quickly. Uh, and like, for example, like that's all I need to do for the yellow, basically, on this guy. I could go back in and dry brush over the top of them, but as I say, I'm painting these for gaming. I'm not painting these to be, like, better than tabletop quality, you know. Um, and it's been an interesting learning process because when it comes to contrast, you have to kind of make a decision on the style you're going for and and being okay with the final product. Because when a contrast miniature is finished, it looks very different from a, a miniature painted in the normal style with Citadel paints. You have all the shading, you have the variations in the hues and the shades it's all very block colors i guess you'd say especially if you're doing what i'm doing and trying to make sort of like a a core force that can be played quickly it does look really nice and i was very proud of how the blue turned out on the helmets in particular um, and i think that the overall look of them is quite nice i need to do some more work on the basing and stuff i'm going to add some vegetation and things so don't worry about that but yeah, it, it was very interesting sort of diving in and playing around with contrasts and having to come to that conclusion that, yes, this is an entirely different army. It's not one you've done before. Um, you need to be okay with the final product. Um, and I think that's something that a lot of people struggle with contrast because they, they pick up contrast to begin with and then they work out that it doesn't look like the rest of their armies. Like, for example, if I take... Let's just take this one here. If I take this Kosagi Nightguard, like, there's so much extra stuff in there compared to the final product for, and I know this isn't really a good idea but like the final product for a Wraith Guard is very different comparatively um, and, and you even see that a little bit with some of the um, 
character figures as well. So like these character figures were done. So here's a Spirit Seer, uh, mostly done with contrasts again for the blues and the yellows. Went in and did additional sort of work with regular Citadel paints for the staff and the sword and the helmet. Still not a fan of the, how the helmet turned out, but again, very different looking miniature. Like if I was painting this normally, I probably would have gone in and highlighted the blue on the helmet. I would probably would have done more gem work. I probably would have dry brushed the yellow as well, but because this is me focusing on making a fighting force rather than just sort of like a display force or something, I thought it would be quite nice to sort of just get it all done and play around with it. Obviously it leaves some interesting marks and all sorts of things like that, but I think it all sort of adds to the characters of the miniatures. And it was quite fun just working on the Adele Dara and not having to worry too much about the stress of all the detail work and everything like that. It was just kind of like, get it done, get it painted, get the base coats down, do maybe a little bit of highlighting and work on things like the, the singing spear, for example, with like glow effects and stuff. But, but generally just have a little bit of fun with it and just run with it and understand that in the end, the miniature is never going to look like uh one of the kind of more classic classically painted miniatures i'm just moving things out of the way there very ad hoc of this blog um but yeah so here's the wraith guard at this current stage i need to do some additional work on the sword there so i'm going to add the glow effect that you see i'm happy enough with the guns but i'm going to do a null oil wash over them and just in the sort of cracks where the uh, sort of Joint show. I'm going to add a bit more definition to those. And then it's on to doing the base work and stuff for them. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to to come on and talk about a little bit of contrast stuff because, as I say, a lot of people will pick up contrast paints and expect them to work like normal paints. Um, and you can get them to work like normal paints, but I think you're kidding yourself if you... Well, you're not kidding yourself. I think you're um, <laughs> you're undervaluing what contrast can do if you get disappointed in it. I've been able to paint pretty much all the stuff you see here. So I was able to paint the Wraith Guard, uh, which I've got a whole unit of, the Spirit Seer and the Far Seer in a week. This Wraith Guard took two hours to paint. Three hours to paint with a little bit of waiting time. Yes, you have to do a little bit more clean up here and there because you have to work back in with the Wraith bone to try and cover up some of the mistakes you've made. But it makes army so ridiculously easy to paint. Um, and, it, you know, the effect by the, at the end of it is pretty damn awesome. And you can always go back in and do some tweaks here and there. But if you're looking to paint up an army very quickly, then I think contrast is, is definitely a good way to go. Uh, especially if you're doing something that's a little bit more elite. I will say that the contrast paints can benefit uh, depending on what paint you've got uh, from one or two coats. So, for example, with the Wraith Guard here. Now, they say one thick coat with contrast, in contrast, haha, to what Duncan would say back in the day. But he said, like, one thick coat of this. It doesn't really work. You need to do one coat, leave it, and then come back on, especially with the blue, sorry, I should say, with the blue for the helmets, and then you get that nice sheen to it. The yellow was all just one coat. If you put two coats or too many coats of the yellow, then it goes orange. Um, so I had this with the Wraith Guard, but I'm not going to change it now because, as I say, quick and easy dirty. So as you can see, that's me going back over to fix it that is how it turned out when i put on two coats unfortunately so uh, in one area because i kind of made a mistake and it doesn't ruin the overall look of the miniature i don't think because once it's on the table like from four feet away it's gonna look great and you could solve that i guess with a little bit of dry brushing but i was quite happy with how that turned out and i think i'm going to leave it as it is um so yeah, just a little bit of experimentation. Oh look, there's a little bit of cleaning up to do on the back of that model as well. But yeah, just a little bit of experimentation and playing around with contrast to see what you like. Um, I, I am 
I'm certainly enjoying the journey of painting in contrast. Um, it'll be very interesting when it comes to more stuff. I've decided to particularly go Wraith Guard heavy because then I only really have to paint Wraith Guard. Um, and they're very, very easy to paint. <laughs> um, I'm, uh, as one of my friends asked, am I going to throw some vehicles into the mix? I said no, because I don't want to paint vehicles. So, yep, yeah, I'm going to be slowly plodding my way across the battlefield with my Wraith Guard. Uh, on the tabletop. Uh, I may end up getting some Aspect Warriors. I think Aspect Warriors could be cool later on down the line. I like the idea of play, painting up some uh, Striking Scorpions or Howling Manches maybe. My favourites were always Sweeping Hawks from back in the days of that old miniature that I showed you earlier. Um, but yeah, kind of happy with how they turned out. Proper like tabletop ready stuff. Nothing too fancy. Not a lot of detail etc. But um, it does the job. And just to sort of cap things off, as you see my arm coming to shot for a second, I thought I would show you how my dude had turned out. So this is my grim, dark berserker, corn berserker from the first video. Um, so yeah, very much enjoying that. Kind of working on more for that for sure. Uh, finish those off, and I'll have shades by them. Oh, but yeah, there you go. Uh, it's just some some thoughts on a well, basically a little bit of a ramble on uh, on contrast paints. But um, yep, very with happy, happy with how they're turning out, and uh, I shall no doubt be back to talk to folks about more stuff in the near future. Uh, thank you, and if you've got any questions or anything you want to say in the comments, please don't hesitate to do so. Bye for now.